Hello and welcome to this film which is about ketones. So this is the third functional group we're looking at and um, just like before um, hopefully we'll know what the functional group actually looks like by the end of this film. We'll be able to name ketones, we'll know why they have the physical properties that they do and what reactions they take part in. So here is a molecule that's got a ketone functional group in it and I'm just going to identify it here. Any molecule that has got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen but no hydrogens attached to that carbon, so in other words carbon chains either side, that will be called a ketone. Okay, so in general terms we can say that this carbon oxygen double bond has to have two carbon chains attached to it. Okay, and this one's called R for a general unspecified carbon chain. This one's just called R dashed to say it's another unspecified carbon chain, but not that one. Okay, they could actually be the same, it's just to say that they could also be different. Okay, the important thing is here we don't have a hydrogen in either of these places because then it would be called an aldehyde. And when you're writing the formulas for these things, you might be wondering what does this look like? Well, this molecule would be CH3, CH2, then we come to the carbon oxygen double bond, so we just write CO, and then CH2, CH3. Okay, so they appear in formulas as CO. Okay, as far as naming ketones goes, this is rather like naming aldehydes and alcohols, except that it's more like naming alcohols because you have to say where the ketone group is. Okay, so if I have a look, uh, first of all, at this ketone here, I've got one, two, three, four, five carbons, so I'd call it pentanone, but the carbon-oxygen double bond is on the second carbon, so I call it pentan-2-one. So bear in mind, unlike an aldehyde, a ketone could be anywhere in the middle of the chain. Okay, this ketone also has one, two, three, four, five carbons, so it would also be called pentanone. But if I'm going to specify where the ketone is, it's now on the third carbon along, so pentan three O. This molecule here has four carbons and a ketone group, so I'd call it butanone. I could call it butan 2 own, but if you think about it, it can't be anywhere else. Because if it was on the third carbon, it would just be butan 2 own again. If it was on the end, it wouldn't be a ketone, it would be an aldehyde. So no need to specify where this particular ketone is. Physical properties of ketones, very much like aldehydes, because um, we've got a carbon-oxygen double bond which is going to be polar, okay, but we don't have any hydrogens directly attached to our highly electronegative element, so this molecule will have dipole-dipole interactions, but no hydrogen bonds with itself, okay. So once again, we'd expect it to have a higher boiling point than an alkane, because alkanes are non-polar, but a lower boiling point than an alcohol, because they can hydrogen bond with, each, with themselves. This is always assuming that the molecular masses are roughly similar and that the dispersion forces are about the same. Looking at solubility in water, well, just like with the aldehydes, we can form hydrogen bonds from the lone pairs to water molecules, but we don't have a hydrogen that can hydrogen bond with the oxygen of water. So we might expect them to be soluble, but again, it depends on how big this nonpolar group is. So the bigger that gets, the less soluble your ketone will be in water. Moving on to what reactions t ketones take part in, well they can't be oxidized at all and, and, and because of that there's actually no reactions of ketones that you need to know about. You do need to know a reaction that involves a ketone but only in the sense that it produces a ketone, so we can make ketones by oxidizing secondary alcohols. If you oxidize a primary alcohol, you'll make an aldehyde, not a ketone. If you, if you try to oxidize a tertiary, uh, tertiary alcohol, you'll fail because they can't be oxidized. 
So secondary alcohols can be oxidized to make ketones. So that's about it for ketones. Hopefully you know what they look like and how to name them. Hopefully you can understand why they have the physical properties that they do and you know what kinds of reactions they take part in or, or don't take part in, I suppose you could say, for ketones. Any questions, come and ask or post a comment on YouTube and I'll get back to you as quick as I can.